Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Tweepers Tech. Today we are going to be looking at Beacon Launcher, a front-end alternative to Reset that I've been using uh, up until now. Um, everyone's always been talking about Emulation Station and I have toyed with the idea of using that. Um, I figured, you know, there's only so many launchers you need and while I do like to do a bit of tinkering, Emulation Station looks like it you know, needs a little bit more tinkering than I'm, what I'm willing to do. Especially when you've set up your emulators beforehand, it, it makes things a bit more complicated. Um, I'm sure there's, most people would agree that it's not that bad, I just don't have the patience. And I've, you know, I do like to opt for the alternative ones out there. So I have spent money on Reset before. Reset, um, I won't click on it now because I've removed my SD card for my uh, new device, which happens to be the portal. I will be doing a video talking about whether it's worth jumping from the Odin 2 to the portal. Um, spoiler alert, it is worth it, trust me. So we'll move this one out of the way for the moment. That's for another video. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned before, um, can't click on reset because all the game art has moved because I've moved my SD card over to the portal. Um, but you know, if you've heard of reset, you know what it's all about. It's got a lot of good metadata. It's got a really nice uh, launcher with a lot of information, a lot of customizable options. I think it fell short uh, in regards to not offering support for Switch and some of the more recent emulators like the PS Vita. Um, but that was about it. Overall, it was a good launcher. So I've came across Beacon and um, what I like about this is, you know, it's got a lot of customizable, you know, customizable options. I've kept it quite minimal. I've gone for a black background. You can really tinker with the backgrounds, the patterns, um, but you can see here, I've got it on a gallery mode. I've got my platforms, all the generations. Uh, currently, I'm emulating up to Dreamcast, PS2, and more recently, um, Switch. I think you're here somewhere. There you are. That's still. I'm still kind of new to Switch emulation, and um, you know, in the near future, hopefully, well, I'll get a bit more established with the PS3 and the PS Vita stuff. I'm still getting my head around that. So early days. So these platform tabs, you can actually customize um, the titles. So if you go here and pressing Y, sorry, the uh, Y button. Uh, so over here, you've got your platforms and you can see I've compiled them over here and you can go back to them and edit them again. Now, originally the Sega Mega Drive, as Americans refer to the Genesis, this short heading popped up as, um, I think it was just, uh, uh, SG, short for Sega Genesis, and I thought, you know, I want to keep it British and change it to Mega Drive so you can choose on the custom tab, create a custom name for it, and so, that, you know, that way you can determine what your platforms look like, the labels, and I think those little things really make it worthwhile. Um, you come down here, you choose uh, what emulator you're going to be using, what app, and then you choose your ROM folder, and then you just save it, and uh, based on your scraping option, it will bring up some game art. Um, if you come down to scraping, these are the sources that it uses. I have added my Steam account, and whatever you keep at the top, it will prioritize, but it does um, scrape from all these sources. So it's worth playing around with that. Um, I think you have to get an asset ID from Stream Grid when you log in with your Steam details, and that will sort of link up. So it's worth having. But I'd say most of the classic games, I prefer using these two at the bottom, GamesDB and ScreenScaper, uh, for my Android stuff, um, and a couple of other platforms, I prefer the Steam Grid, but it's nice to play around, it's just a preference of what you want. Um, not everyone will want the same thing, but for me, I kind of like the logo showing on the platform, I want it to emulate the actual packaging, so you can see here with uh, Game Boy Advance, that's what the design would look like on the actual um, packaging of the game, Dreamcast as well. GameCube, but I think the one platform I did have problems with was probably, I think it was Super Nintendo, and I have got it sorted now, let's have a look, yeah for some reason Super Nintendo gave me some problems, and when I was adding these platforms there were some syncing issues, and I had to do them a couple of times, but once it's done it just looks really pretty, right, it just looks really good doesn't it, um, so on preferences, once again you've got the themes, uh, theme colors, um, you can change your background style. There's a lot you can tinker with, uh, but I prefer it quite minimal. I'm going to keep it black. Um, you can show your metadata 
So when you go back, you can see each game talks about the release date, the genre, the developer, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, me personally, I'm not really bothered about that. I liked it on reset, but I'm kind of staring towards this uh, minimal look now. And it's just a preference of what you prefer. Um, let's have a look. You can have the bottom bar. Uh, if I disable it, you can see all that information at the bottom is gone. So even more minimal than what it was before. I'll keep it back on for now because I kind of need to show a couple of features. Let's put that back on. So if you wanted to change the layout at a glance, you can click on this button here. I've got it on gallery at the moment. You can go to a list form, which has that Raspberry Pi kind of feel. Uh, and you go to grid. Some people may prefer that. And a nice little uh, PS Vita touch with the bubbles. That's kind of cute. Uh, it's not for me personally, it hurts my eyes, but you know, I think I prefer the gallery mode, but it's just a preference of what you might prefer. If you press the uh, B button, sorry, I might be confusing. I've got the uh, buttons the wrong, wrong way around, but this is the actual B button in, in regards to the Xbox layout. So here's the list of all your apps if you want to access anything else. So which means you can actually use this as your primary launcher, which I'm considering doing. But to be honest, I still quite like the Odin launcher. Uh, it, it has its limitations, but I still quite like it. Uh, let's see what else are we missing the now tab and the favorites tab if I disable them it basically show it only shows you the platforms and there's no now tab which basically for me I think it's a continued playing tab uh, but the favorites tab is quite useful so I think I'm gonna put that back on and then to add favorites all you basically do is hold on to the tile and click on favorites and then like so there's your favorites tab so that's quite a handy feature um but i think overall you know there's a few different features you can mess around with but it's not too complicated um i think this launcher is kind of ideal for someone that's already set up their emulators they've already done your bios files you've done everything and you just want a nice launcher to put it all together and this doesn't take much time at all and it was a real pleasure to do um it didn't take up much time and i can't wait to see this on the portal device with the bigger oled screen especially with that black background things are going to really pop on this but yeah i'm really happy with this launcher like i said it cost about two pound i think it's really worth it it's probably my favorite out there so far i've done about you know, i think i've played with about three or four different launchers um I think I'm going to have to park reset for now. Thank you for your time. But for me, this is the best one out there right now. I've been a bit biased um, <laughs> because I've obviously bought this myself and uh, I've chosen not to get Emulation Station. And I know most of you will say that's the better one, but this will definitely do me. I'm quite happy with this. So, um, yeah, just a quick video of this launcher. Definitely recommend it. Um, I'm going to do another video shortly on the, uh, you know, you get a portal. Or do you stick with your Odin 2? I'm also uh, learning a bit more about the uh, Steam downloads that you can do via GameHub. I've seen a few videos of that and that seems to be a bit more established. So getting my Steam collection on this is going to be fantastic, especially on this big screen. So stay tuned to those videos. I'll uh, see you on the next episode of Tweefers Tech. Take care.